turn six or seven right now in the Control Warrior mirror <laughs> to, for the equivalent of it. But uh, in the time it takes to finish three games, we already have seen George C. take a 2-1 lead. Just has to win with his Warrior and Druid remaining up against Rogue, Hunter, and Druid. Yeah, those were some fast matches, uh, fast games that we saw earlier, but things are about to slow down. George C. does have that Control Warrior remaining now as one of his two decks, and yeah. uh, it does include very slow cards such as uh, Sogot the Slitterer, so if he wants to get a win with that one, it's unlikely to be a quick one. I'm kind of expecting a Hunter pick here from um uh, I kill you, considering that it's the strongest against the remaining two decks. Yep. And he is going to go for that right now. And George C switches to the Warrior. This deck is definitely um, have has a breath of new life in it, just because of Ironforge portals and the way it kind of gives Control Warrior a lot more tools to be defensive. People used to think of Control Warrior just a couple months ago as just a Cthune Warrior. That's the only way you can reliably gain armor these days when Shield Maiden was rotated out back into Wild. And so with Shield Maiden gone, they're like, well, we can have Super Shield Maiden with the Ancient Shield Bearer. <laughs> Uh, and then Control Warrior lost one of its best tools. Now with Ironforge Portal, it's kind of back. Yep, there's uh, there's a fighting chance here, but George C is definitely going to get to have a hard time against this Hunter. High mains, also the Call of the Wilds, those are really difficult cards to deal with as a Warrior player. I would I would even go to say that the Hunter matchup is the worst one for, for the Warrior. At least one of the worst ones, if not the worst one. One thing that I'm excited about is to see if George's Saga to Sothra can come out again and be a big player. Uh, I love that card because it's just the enemy from the entrance to the fact of like how just big and menacing it is. Just 5 9, you can't execute my minion or do anything to it. It's, uh, it's pretty dope. Yeah, it re is really awesome. He's considering whether to play the Bloodhoof Brave or the Elise Star Seeker. And personally, I would uh, prefer to see the Elise here so that if there is a Hound Master coming out, the Elise with three attack and the Fiery War Axe. In together are going to be able to take out the 6-6 Misha. Uh, by the way, I kill you and his Tundra Rhino is a very interesting pick uh, for his deck. What, what is he really going for? Like, What is he trying to target or does he have a specific game plan in mind or does he just like the card, you know? I think he just wants to uh, try to curve out a tiny bit better because Hunter tends to have this uh, kind of an empty spot at 5 mana. Princess Huhuran, I do think that the card is actually not bad at all, but nobody really seems to be playing it. So. I think it might be just to kind of fill out the curve at five mana. Mm -hmm. I miss the days we play Kodo, especially Kodo on Blood of Brave type scenarios. Um, but I can definitely see why it's a little bit inconsistent. Yeah, Kodo. Oh, that's not what he was hoping to get. George C really needed something better there. Yeah, about the Kodo. I do think that the Kodo is a very strong card, but the Hunter game plan overall tends to be very aggressive, and the Kodo is a little bit situational. So the Hunter playstyle just uh, suits better with the. Uh, with a proactive minions instead of having a reactive card that might not find this opportunity. Man, look at that Tundra Rhino synergy. Because Kindly Grandmother summons, summons <laughs> a big bad wolf that's also a beast, you can double attack with them, which just creates a huge board for the hunter. Oh, this is awesome to see. Here we see that the Tundra Rhino really pulling a lot of weight, and if it, if it does not get dealt with, and there's something like a high main to follow it up, that is charging six damage. Yeah, and it's also behind Taunt, so it's not easy to remove. Yeah, that was oh, so man. much extra damage from that. Josie would love to have a brawl here, but uh, unfortunately for him, <laughs> it does not have it right now, so he needs to find a different line of play. Yeah, perhaps Bloodhoof Brave and the Doomsayer could set up the most amount of health. I think you're not exactly expecting Doomsayer to activate. In the best case scenario, it does. In the worst case, it just gains you seven health. Yeah, that's an option. He could also try to kind of like desperately shield block maybe to find a shield slam for the Thunder Rhino if he's very worried about the high man. Yeah. Looks like he's going to um, go for the axe here and the Blood Hoof Brave, not having much faith in the Doomsayer effect triggering. Sure. King Selec, I kill you really needs this one. Draws another beast if it wins the Joust. <laughs> another minion charge. Oh, oh, he gets an infested wolf. <sighs> That is going to be brutal. I, I was mean, saying that the, the Thunder Rhino might be there to fill out the curve, but yeah. it's certainly doing a lot more in this particular game. Yeah, I would say it's pretty good. I remember the days of Warsong Commander giving uh, <laughs> literally every other minion in your deck charge. That was also pretty nutty. Then they changed it to three attack, uh, which also was still nuts. And then, uh, you know, Warsong Commander.
May it rest in peace. I've never seen a Thunder Rhino this effective in a in a tournament setting. Yeah. I mean, I've seen some Thunder Rhinos be played and not answered and called. The Wilds came out, but that was on ladder, and I was alt-tabbing to watch other Twitch streams <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> but uh, at least I have an excuse there. Yeah, just see here. Has to go for the shield block, trying to find something to play. Oh, gets another bash, but that's no good. Shield slam would have been much better. With that, he could have maybe played the Doomsayer, played the, played the shield slam on that Rhino. Mm -hmm. Such a huge threat still. Yeah, yeah. just uh, doesn't want to waste any more time. He knows that the, his chances to win are non-existent. Yeah, George Concede comes out there. <laughs> <laughs> and now tied 2-2. I kill you, staying true to his name. As uh, we are going down to a best of three now, Savic. Just game for game, tit for tat. And with that, we'll be right back. 